I wanted to give you a little background of my own, my being. But first of all, I want to say I'm so happy to be here. And I'm filled with the joy to have the chance to spend some time with you, all of you, to experience to be a part of this community that you have created. Wherever we gather together in the Lord's name, he's there with us. Of course, my wife just sang, so joining you today is my wife. How lucky am I that I get to have a voice like that with me all the time. And incredibly, Jeff Kubeta playing. You all know him, but you really don't know me. So I thought I'd give you some of my background. I'm an ordained minister by way of the Catholic Church. You go, hmm, what does that mean? Well, by that, I mean I was born and baptized in an Irish-German Catholic family, went to Catholic school from second grade to 12th grade till graduation, and that at 18, I entered the convent. Hmm, that was some fun and experience. However, I did have good nuns. Not one nun slapped me. Oh, oh, once, once. Once because I had a very good friend. Her name was Judy Collins, and we hung out together all the time. And this young nun said, you need to stay away from Judy Collins. And I said, oh, why don't you just shut up? She slapped me in the face. I went home. I said, Mom, Sister Agnes James slapped me in the face today. My mother said, oh, what for? I said, I told her to shut up. Bam, on the other side. So there you go, right? Good Irish, Irish woman she was. <clears throat> I could see from an early age that I was more fortunate than some, having been born into what might be considered an upper, upper middle class family. But I always had a feeling, a pull, that I wanted to do something more, something more for my life. I wanted to work with people and help them to come to see their own spirituality. So I thought that joining the religious order and dedicating my life to God, I believed that it would give me a chance to fully experience this need of mine and be able to give it freely, give love freely, give, give spirituality freely. Well, after eight years, I realized that some of my ideas for helping people, particularly battered women in, in our community, um, were too forward-looking, too progressive for the community at that time. It was disappointing to me. I tried. I tried to set up a, a, a house to be a liaison between the women and, and the social services, but it didn't, it didn't get through. After much soul searching, I decided to leave. It was just before I was to take my final vows. I felt that I could do more as a layperson. So it was a right decision for me, but I have to say <coughs> that all these years, it makes me very proud that the community that I was in is now probably one of the most avant-garde communities there are. My friends who are still in from my, my group are doctors and lawyers and dentists and teachers, and they're all over. So I'm proud to say, yeah, no thanks to Rome and the uh, patriarchal system <coughs> an organization of the Catholic Church, mind you. They still, we're still fighting for women to be ordained. Following that, I realized that I really had a call for teaching. And I taught for 32 years. I loved every minute of it. I loved my kids. And I'm fortunate today that I have many of my, quote, kids who are now in their 40s and 50s, uh, friends on Facebook. So. Uh, I, I guess I touched some people's lives then. Then, after 35 years as a breast cancer survivor, I volunteered for 10 years at our local hospital in the infusion center. Another joy for me was to be able to sit with women who were faced with the fact 
that they were going to lose their breasts. They were going to have to go through chemotherapy and radiation, all of which I had been through. So it was my, I felt calling to be there for them. The other thing at that hospital, they had a program called No One Dies Alone, and um, I was a volunteer on that. And what it was, someone was always with a person who had no family in their last hours of life. It's a great, great program that is spread across the country. But my journey led me to becoming an ordained minister of the Universal Life Church. Now, some people know you can go online and pay 50 bucks and you can become an ordained minister. I take it more seriously than that. I really believe it's a calling of mine. Um, I've been invited um, for the last five years to speak at the Utica College School of Nursing on spirituality in nursing, which I love doing. So I get to work with college students who are in the service of people. I've had the joy of officiating many marriages, ceremonies, both straight and gay, LGBTQ+, and I've had the honor to be a part of end of life and funeral services whenever I was needed. I truly believe that God has been working through me through all these years. It's been a unique experience for me, and my life has been filled with so many wonderful experiences. Through pain and joy, I've been brought to this calling. The reading today was Matthew, chapter 5, verse 15. Let your light shine in the sight of men. Let them see you and your good works that you do in praise of God, Father in heaven. Recently, I was taking a break from my work, part of which was getting ready for this homily today. And um, I found myself scanning through Facebook, as we sometimes do, right? <laughs> and I came across this powerful, compelling story by Elizabeth Gilbert. It's not new, and you may even have heard it before, but it felt somehow especially important at this time for my homily. Again, the influence of God coming into your life. The music today, Jean's song today, just all fitting together to talk to us. So I wanted to be able to let you hear how powerful this story is. So I'm going to tell you it as Elizabeth wrote it. Some years ago, I was stuck on a bus in New York City during rush hour, and traffic was barely moving. The bus was filled with cold, tired people who were deeply irritated. I guess what? <laughs> I'm sure they were. They were irritated with one another, with the world itself. Two men barked at each other about a shove that happened. It might or might not have been on purpose or intentional. A pregnant woman got on the bus. No one moved for her. Rage was in the air. No mercy would be found there. But as the bus approached 7th Ave, the driver got on the intercom and said, Folks, he said, I know you have had a rough day and you are frustrated. I can't do anything about weather or traffic, but here is what I can do. As each one of you gets off the bus, I will reach out my hand, okay? Don't take your problems home. Just leave them with me. My route goes right by the Hudson River and I will drive by later and I will open the window and throw your troubles into the river. It was as if a spell had been broken. Everyone burst out laughing. Faces gleamed with surprise and delight. People who had been pretending the past hour not to notice the person next to them, or even that they existed, 
Suddenly, they were grinning at each other, and they said, Is this guy serious? Oh, yes, he was serious. At the next stop, just as he promised, the driver reached out his hand, palm up, all the accident comm commuters placed their hand just above his and mimed dropping something in the palm of his hand. The driver repeated the same lovely ritual at the next stop too, and the next, all the way to the river. We live in a hard world. Sometimes it's extra difficult to be human. Sometimes we have a bad day that lasts for years. We fall, we struggle, we lose jobs, money, friends, love, faith. We witness horrible things and events un unfolding in the news, and we become fearful and withdrawn. There are times when everything seems cloaked in darkness. We all long for the light, but we don't know where to find it. We all have a spiritual dimension that motivates, energizes, and influences every aspect of our lives. So what if you, each one of you, were the light? If you are the very agent of illumination that a dark situation begs for? That's what this bus driver taught me that anyone could be the light at any moment. This guy wasn't some big power player. He wasn't a spiritual leader. He wasn't some media savvy, say me, savvy, <coughs> influencer. He was a bus driver, one of society's most invisible persons. But he possessed real power and spent it beautifully for our benefit. When life feels especially grim, or when we feel powerless in the face of the world's troubles, the wars in Ukraine, Gaza, Israel, the political atmosphere in this country and abroad, I want you to think of this man and ask yourself, what can I do right now? What can I do? How can I be the light? Of course, none of us can personally end all wars or solve global problems or transform vexing people into human beings. <laughs> but we def oh, and we definitely cannot control traffic for sure. <laughs> but we do have some influences on everyone we brush up against even if we never speak or learn their names. How we behave matters because within human society, everything is contagious. Sadness and anger, yes, but also patience and generosity, which means we all have the ability to influence others. Almost there. How's my time? <laughs> no matter who you are, or where you are, or how mundane or tough your situation may seem, I believe you can illuminate the world. In fact, I believe this is the only way that the world will ever be illuminated. One bright act of grace at a time, all the way to the river. It's not only the big things that I was thinking about, however, just the little everyday things we do can cast a powerful light simply by smiling at a stranger, making eye contact with people as we walk down the street, holding a door open for another, giving a hug to someone who really needs it. 
just being truly present with someone, a kind word, a touch, sharing laughter, or sp sparing a couple bucks for a person in need, or doing some volunteer work. It's up to you and me to brighten the world. So go and let your light shine. Finally, I want to leave you with this brief but powerful thought from author Ram Das. If you feel comfortable, if there's somebody next to you, you reach out and hold their hand. And remember this, we're all just walking each other home. Thank you.